Dr. Eric, the fitness physician, where I talk about all things related to hormone optimization and much, much more. I talk about muscle medicine and hormonal fitness and many other things related to health and longevity in men's health and women's health and etc. So continuing on, I'm going to talk a little bit uh, more about on a serious note about hypogonadism, low testosterone, low DHEA, etc. Uh, hypogonadism is also often recognized and it's starting to become more and more recognized as kind of like the um, unrecognized risk factor for uh, what they call coronary artery disease, cardiovascular disease, and much, much more. It's kind of like the canary in the coal mine. Oftentimes men come in seem because of erectile dysfunction or issues like that. And again, that's the canary. It's like that's an early warning signal, kind of like people come in with uh, visual symptoms and that could be an early indicator of metabolic disease or diabetes. Same thing here can be an early indicator and there's a, definitely a link to hypogonadism, uh, hypogonadism and cardiovascular disease in men and women. As we all know, Cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of men and women in the world, period, especially here in the United States. So again, it's kind of an un unrecognized risk factor. Of course, everybody focuses on cholesterol, diet, and smoking things, which are all, of course, massively important. But uh, low testosterone and low uh, androgens are, and low estrogen are massively important. And again, unfortunately, it doesn't get much, uh, much, uh, much talk uh, in the press, unfortunately. And there's, again, politics and economics, right? But again, unrecognized risk factor for very important things. And it's clearly been shown associations between um, hypogonadism and diabetes, metabolic syndrome, you know, hypertension, obesity, and again, coronary artery disease in general. So, of course, all these things are massively out of control right now in the United States and in, in uh, modern civilization everywhere for that matter. So, it's a huge problem. Uh, massively needs uh, control and, of course, diet, lifestyle, uh, exercise, all these things. But, of course, hormonal fitness, right? Hormone optimization, peptide therapies, uh, regenerative medicine therapies, and much, much more can improve this tremendously at very little cost. Again, the whole goal is to prevent disease from happening in the first place. So, you know, there's a lot of theories behind this, and I'm, I'm, I'm just going to touch on this briefly today. We'll talk about it more in the future. But, of course, one some of these things relate to abnormal cytokine production uh, and inflammation, right? Which we know that coronary vascular disease, inflammation plays a huge part in not only this, but all the bad modern diseases of degeneration. Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, insulin resistance, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and PCOS, and much, much more. So uh, some of these inflammations, some of the inflammation is just overall inflammation in general from abnormal enzymes, abnormal cytokines. A lot of people, unfortunately, are getting uh, insulin resistance and uh, you know, basically gaining fat, and this fat uh, is becomes inflammatory and can in itself produce an inflammatory cytokines, and it's kind of a vicious cycle. Uh, abnormal lipid metabolism related to a decreased hormone sense of lipase because we're not burning our fat properly. We're, we're run by sugar and we're inflamed. So these enzymes are not working properly. So the hormone sense of lipase is what breaks down fat to be usable and it's not working properly. Abnormal cellular respiration. Again, you know me, I talk about all things related to cellular fitness uh, and nutrition, right? We treat things at the cellular level and cellular respiration is basically, you know, everything inside your mitochondria, inside the cell itself and how, it, how your body produces energy and produces ATP, the currency. Uh, inside the mitochondria, our little powerhouse that generate generate our uh, energy stores from it generates ATP to power everything in our body. It's not working properly. Things get out of whack. Again, this can cause increased oxidation. It throws off the whole redox cycle, which we'll talk about later. Uh, can affect um, all the cellular processes, and of course, affect all your other cytokines and enzymes, the hormones, other hormones. Causing insulin resistance, abnormal mitochondrial function, which of course lends leads to fatigue. Things start the cell stops working properly, tissues stop working properly, organs stop working properly. So it starts at the cell. Things start getting out of whack, and, and it's just again it's a vicious cycle. And all this can be. These are some of the things that are involved with this. So again, very very underrecognized and very massively important to uh, to, to correct this, and um, we can have a major impact on on people's health and longevity and their ability to, con to contribute to their family, their life. Uh, their other, you know, their work, uh, everyone in their life and around them. You know, me, well, I'm all about talking about live to give and we want to be around so we can help others, right? So anyway, so we'll talk more in the future. Hopefully everyone enjoys that one and we'll have an awesome day. We'll talk to you soon.